guys, hope everybody's doing well. I just got back from Reno, Nevada over this past weekend uh, where I was playing at the Gen Conference. I was playing uh, as a guest soloist with the Juilliard Jazz Orchestra for the Gala concert there, which was a total blast. And uh, right before that, I was uh, doing a, a bunch of dates on Chris Bodie's holiday residency at the Blue Note, uh, which was really awesome. The band sounded incredible and Chris was uh, killing it as always. And uh, I'm gonna be playing uh, some of Chris's touring dates coming up. So make sure to always be checking uh, the show dates on my website. And of course, I've got a bunch of my own stuff coming up. So uh, I think there's not much on there now, but we're about to be uh, uh, announcing a bunch of uh, spring dates. So make sure to stay tuned. So what we're gonna do is go through uh, these four exercises by checking out one of the tunes from the PDF track package that I just told you about. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out this one called Confirmed Nation. I'm sure a lot of you guys will recognize the changes here. And this is gonna be a B-flat tenor version of the package, of course, but we've also got these files available in B-flat trumpet, E-flat alto sax, concert, and bass clef. So the first step here is we're going to practice playing different arpeggio shapes on these changes. And what that means is we're going to use the one, three, five, and seven of every chord, but mix up the order. Uh, so when you hear people solo with wider intervals, but it sounds really melodic, a lot of times they're just using arpeggios. And if you want to use wider intervals in a more abstract inside out type of way, the first step is to of course master this uh, in an inside way first, um, so that's what, what we're gonna do here. And so we're gonna cut to one of the recordings of me playing uh, the first exercise. And just so you know, the PDF track package comes with me playing recordings of each of these exercises all the way through on all 20 of the standards. Uh, so it will be a really great practicing resource for you guys. <laughs> So the second exercise is going to use just the chord scales. So essentially we're going to solo diatonically through these changes. Uh, and it's so important with every tune that you learn to be able to solo diatonically through it with solid voice leading, which just means the smooth melodic transition from chord to chord. So that's what I've written out here and you'll find this on all of the 20 chord progressions in the PDF. <laughs> All right, so the third exercise here is gonna start getting us into approach notes. Um, so those of you who have checked out my past videos already know this, but approach notes uh, are the source of what's happening a lot of times melodically in jazz line construction. Anytime you see or hear chromatic notes or notes outside of the scale, uh, but they still sound melodic, that's when you're hearing or seeing approach notes and enclosures, which are just approach notes moving around a target note, which is typically a chord tone. Uh, for more practice on this, you guys can check out my other videos and other PDF packages that have exercises and etudes on this concept. Uh, but this new PDF package that we're uh, talking about here, um, it's the first PDF package that has approach note exercises over standards. Um, and just a reminder that this is all available on my website, comes with the backing tracks and, and me playing all these exercises. So you can check that out at the link below. So with this third exercise, we're just going to play two note approaches into scale tones. And we're almost always going to approach more specifically into chord tones here, uh, because usually that sounds the most melodic. For example, that means approaching a third will be a little bit more melodic than approaching a sixth. 
Uh, and we're almost always going to use chromatic approach notes because on the last exercise we were doing, that's where we were solely diatonically. And that was essentially using a bunch of diatonic approach notes. So now we're just mainly going to stick with chromatic approaches. And so we're just going to do this repeated rhythm. It's not the hippest thing in the world, but remember this is just an exercise and it's really going to help us ease into the approach notes concept. Uh, plus it's actually going to improve your ears big time because you're going to hear all the chromatic in between notes and how they function or how they can function in a very melodic context. <laughs> So now for our fourth exercise, this is going to be the hardest one, but this is going to massively strengthen your line construction. Now we're just going to add one more note and do three note approaches, which is essentially going to give us constant eighth notes approaching chord or scale tones all the way through. Um, by the way, you might see every once in a while um, on a B1 or three, we'll land on a nine non-diatonic tone. Um, that's just for sake of variation. Every once in a while I'll throw that in there just for an extra level of hip per se. Um, so here's this last exercise and remember you can download all the stuff off my website. It comes with the backing tracks and me playing the exercises. It's going to be a great practice tool so check that out at the link below. <laughs> So that's it. Um, now trust me, if you check this stuff out, it's going to make so much more sense how you can get better at soloing on standards. And this stuff is going to have pretty immediate results uh, because it's really getting to the heart of what I found is really a lot of weaknesses in more developing players and even advanced players as well. Um, and so I can really guarantee that if you, uh, if you shut on this stuff, your lines are going to start sounding way better very quickly. So thanks for checking out the video. Really hope it was helpful and I hope to see you guys all on tour soon. As always, happy shedding and I'll see you next time.